Hey, what's up, y'all? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie. So, um, so um, I actually started. I, actually I was. Started, I'm an old True Green Kimlon guy. Kim I started, guy. There, I started in there in 1998, 1998 as a college as job. A college I got a job there in sales. There in and sales. Uh, back then, it was uh, running leads. Uh, running leads. And uh, we'd run about 30 leads a day. That was all throughout the south side of Chicago. Look at 30 lawns, three qualified leads. And then come back to the shop in the afternoon, and we would bang out the phones and we would call those people and sell them lawn care. Seven apps, Mrs. Jones, six weeks apart. Weeks Somebody's apart. gonna call you back, say yes three back, times, that kind of stuff, like hardcore sales, like boiler room stuff. Boiler room stuff. But during that, I really during started that, to really learn the lawns at the same time, kind of interestingly enough. And, interestingly enough. and then, enough. And then college didn't work out for me very well. I ended up continuing. Are we having technical difficulties? I see you guys looking off to the side and off to the side and stuff. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whoa, dude. I was Whoa. flying. Man. I was, I was talking about boiler. I was talking about boiler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I closed all my windows. I closed all my windows. Made sure. Made sure. Testing, testing, one, two, three. No, I'm just talking no, through, I'm just talking through the, computer. the computer. I don't have anything else open. I don't have anything else open. Testing, 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 still testing, echo, still echo, 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 echo. <laughs> I can try to change, try to change and get a different mic on my end, mic if that would help. end if that would help. I, I don't think it's the mic. I think it's the program. Hey, I tell you what, I'm going to hey, mute. I'm going to mute. You talk and tell me if it still does that. All right, so I'll mute myself. I'll mute myself. Alan, can you try talking again? Testing one, two, testing, three. One, testing, two, three. testing, testing, testing. All right, and can everybody hear me? I, I see people saying my sound was bad. Am I still echoing on Am my I still end? echoing on my end? Mm, I think a little bit. Okay, I just changed something. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Can you guys hear Alan when he talks? Alan, are your speakers at home on? It just says internal speakers. Okay. So that usually means we're good, but I can switch over to a different mic if I need to. Am I still echoing? 
Yeah. Oh, somebody said good. Good, good, good. 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 Oh, people are saying good. Okay. Um, so I think we're I think we're good. Are we good? I think so. Okay. So we're good. So that was a lot of fun. That was five minutes of really nerve-wracking fun. So I appreciate everybody being nice and patient and helpful in terms of that. No, there isn't an echo. Awesome. Okay. So we're all good. Cool. If anybody has tuned in for our previous videos, there have been situations sometimes where we just had to completely scrap it. So I'm really glad that didn't happen, especially since we have an as awesome of a guest as Alan is. So to kind of recap on what we were talking about and what you guys need to know, um, Alan, one more time, without the echo, hopefully this time, can you give us a little explanation on how you got started with your channel? What inspired you? What your goal was right from the get-go? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so uh, like I had mentioned before, like I, I mentioned worked at True Green as a college, college job, True Green, Kimball, Green Kimball, on South Side of Chicago, and, and, learned, a and, and about learned a lot about hardcore sales there, boiler room, type, boiler room type, stuff. type stuff. But in, in the midst of all that, I also really that, liked the business. I really liked the people I worked with. I had some really great mentors there. And I ended up really learning and discovering a passion for lawn care. I just did. I just really liked it. And so when college didn't work out for me, I stayed at True Green, and I spent 15 years there working my way up. Um, and again, started in sales, started in I was a, a, a lawn specialist for a little while, tree and shrub tech, um, operations, um, operations manager, general manager, and then I moved up into region management. So I did a lot of uh, cool lot of, things and I had a lot of fun. We, lot of we launched door-to-door -door -door sales for True Green. Uh, when the telemarketing kind of went in a dumper, we actually started door-to-door -door sales. I had 50 door-to-door sales reps, you know, selling for me. But again, it's True Green, big corporate lawn care. And what happened was over time, I really got tired of that corporate feel and I got tired of I got the way that we way marketed that we ourselves, marketed and we marketed ourselves, ourselves on price. Ourselves and I'm price. taking a little more, more time here because, again, this is a, a discussion that we're going to lead to, which is this DIY versus DIY professional, professional, professional kind of thought structure, thought structure or, or thought stream or that, can thought that can go on. And so, and so, you know, during those times, I realized that we were worth a lot more than the way we were marketing, and the way we were marketing was twenty nine ninety five for an introductory application. That's how we did it. Does it still have any issues? Are we good? Apparently the echo is still going on, which I I didn't touch it, so I don't know why all of a sudden it decided to come back. Um, Let me switch over my mic and see if that changes anything. Okay, I, that, let's try that. Um, so while Alan is switching out his mic just to see if for some reason that's the issue, which generally this program can be a little funny with that, um, but just in case it's a microphone thing, Alan's going to switch that out. Right now at this point, I'm going to talk to you guys real quick and try to fill this in, um, we are planning on talking about Alan's channel a little bit, what he's got going on, as well as the Movember campaign and how that's been impacting the lawn care community. For anybody who doesn't know, Movember is the movement to raise awareness on men's health issues. So everything Alan from... Does it when he's on the screen. Okay. So everything from, you know, cancer risks to mental health to getting wellness checks, everything like that. This has been a really awesome campaign just to make sure that everybody's able to stay as healthy as they can um, throughout all of that. One of the things that's really cool about it is that there's also a big giveaway going on. So a lot of channels like ours and Alan's and a lot of other people have donated to participate in helping to raise awareness with these sweepstakes. So if you haven't looked into that yet, be sure to check out Alan's video about November, our video about November, so that you can really maximize on not only the education, but the opportunities and to participate in everything that's going on there. Um, let me see real quick. So it looks like, um, so long as we're looking at me, you can hear Alan fine. Um, Alan, do you have your microphone set up and ready to go? Yes, can you hear me on it right now? Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> nope, nothing. Okay, so I guess that's better than an echo. Um, <laughs> this is not as smooth as I wanted it to be. So Alan's gonna tweak that, I guess, real quick and see what might be going on with that microphone. Um, Brandon has been running back and forth trying to help us in the kitchen with hearing what you guys are hearing in terms of all of that. Um, if anybody has questions that they want to put into the comments instead of brutally scalding feedback about how 
unprofessional this whole situation is, that'd be great too. I'm always happy to answer your questions about what my shoe size is or Movember or anything else that you want to know. Um, Alan, do you want to try testing that microphone one more time? Can you? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold okay, on. I can hear you now. Okay, I could, I could hear you when you didn't have that microphone. That microphone's not working. I don't hear anything there. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's something not going on. Um, hear me now? I can hear you now. Talk can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, but you couldn't hear me when I was on the mic. No. Okay, then I don't know okay. what's going on with that. All <laughs> right, so let's wait for the commenters to catch up at this point in the thread because there's that like 30 second lag um, and see if there's an echo still. Uh, somebody wants to know my, somebody wanted to know my shoe size. I'm size eight and for how tall I am, that's a pretty small foot. So that's a personal thing that you know about me now for those foot people out there. Um, somebody said, perfect. So Alan, what's your shoe size? Can you give us something to talk about real quick so we can make sure that everything's it's working? Echoing the way? Still when you see him. Apparently it's echoing again. It's still so echoing. It's still echoing. When he talks and space in you, it's fine. It's but only nobody wants on the, to look at me the whole well, time. I, I can't help that. It's only when you're on the, when he's on the screen. That's weird. That's that is, weird. I don't. That's why I don't understand. That's really weird. Um. Okay. Maybe if you mute when I'm on the screen. Like mute you. Or you mute you. Or you mute you. Maybe there's some feedback coming across when I'm on the screen, coming across yours. I don't know. Like I've been on conference like calls been on before. Conference where everybody calls mutes, before. and everybody only the person that's talking person that's talking. doesn't mute. Doesn't mute. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, I'm I saying? do. So I'll let's try that. Okay, so I'll ramble about I'll nothing ramble about for like nothing 30, seconds. Like 30 I'll, seconds. I'll do some I'll, Mac I'll Miller. Do some Mac Miller. I'll spit some Mac I'll Miller for like Mac 45 Miller, seconds. Like 45 y'all tell me how you feel about that. All right, that sounds good. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right, go for it. Okay, so okay, so I'll just keep telling the story, and if, story uh, and if and if I uh, see strange looks, see then strange I'll know that it's then I'll know that it's that it's echoing that it's again, echoing again. So so I can't remember where I was I at. Oh, so was one of the things that I learned while working there, working there at True Green was that I Green was I worked with some very I brilliant some very people. Brilliant I mean, people that that had been taking care of lawns for many years and understood soils and lawn care and understood the South Side of Chicago and what we dealt with there and over in Northwest Indiana on the lake. Versus down, so a lot. I mean, we had people that were really good really lawn, good care, lawn care folks, and folks. and they should have been. I thought been, the I thought, lead in our marketing, and I thought we should tell the story of our people. And what makes True Green so great is how awesome these people are. I mean, these people are literally we had people that had 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 clean lawns on the top lawns for years. Is it still uh, still echoing? Still echoing? What he's saying is meet your microphone while he's on. It's still bad. It's still bad. Okay, so I, I muted my speakers, but then I couldn't hear you talking anymore. So that's, just, that's, that's just life, I guess. Um, just, just to do it facing you the whole time. Well, All we right. can try headphones. Yeah, we can try headphones. I have some headphones have somewhere some around. Headphones somewhere around. All right, so I guess um, just to kind of spare everybody the pain, since I, I think I'm going to give people PTSD in terms of the pleasure that is YouTube live streams. Um, the big thing that Alan and I wanted to talk about, whether you know you just have to stare at us the whole time that Alan talks or whatever, um, is is what the current climate is where we're looking at professional lawn care compared to homeowner DIY lawn care. And obviously it's kind of one of those grayscale effects where you can have somebody who doesn't ever want to touch it, they don't want to even look at it, and they just want somebody to take care of it, and they are a full professional in terms of their lawn care investment. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got the homeowner where it is their pride and joy. They are out there eight hours a day. It is a full-time job. They're using the scissors to cut the grass. They are all about it, and they don't want anyone else to touch it. They're obsessed. You usually have 
somewhere in the middle, the vast majority of people, whether they hire somebody for the chemicals, but they're still mowing it themselves, or they really like to do the fertilizer, but they're not physically able to cut the grass every week. Whatever that spectrum ends up being, most of the time there is some kind of fade and crossover between the need for homeowners to understand what they're doing that impacts their lawn and how the company that they're hiring to do certain services is impacting it as well. So Alan, from the angle that you have where you're helping people learn about their lawns and how to DIY, but also how to DIY responsibly, Within your following, do you see a lot of people that are kind of at that point where they recognize that there are some things that are better done professionally and then some things that are better done themselves? Yeah, I think it's, I think there's like everything you kind of mentioned, there's a scale, right? And one thing I always say is, is that a semi-engaged DIYer will always have a nicer lawn than even the most engaged professional. And when I say professional, I mean professional spray business, professional treatment business. And the reason I say that is, is because the most engaged professional still is only on the property once a month at most. Maybe if there's a service call or two, you're in there a couple other times. Whereas the semi-engaged homeowner is at that property every day for hours, right? So a semi-engaged homeowner doing their own lawn can get on top of things more proactively than the even the best professional. So it's not there is no comparison between who's better than the other. It's not even close because I only have one property to treat. I have one lawn and I have one job, right? You have many, many lawns and many, many jobs and, and a lot of factors to deal with that I don't. So it's not really a comparison. However, there are overlaps and I think the overlaps, we can talk about the overlaps online and the way that, that uh, things are conveyed online and good messages get delivered from the both of us to talk about that. But we can also talk about this segment of the population. And I've been trying to identify how many folks are like this in my audience, but they're folks that have a professional that, that does their lawn, um, and not, not a mowing professional, a, a, a treatment company or somebody doing treatments for them. But they also watch and are highly engaged in my community and even will buy my ebooks and things like that because they want to be more engaged with the service they're paying for. They want to understand more about what it is because maybe there are some things they can do to improve it, right? Like, for example, mowing. And I always say this every uh, lawn treatment service, if you ask them, what's the one thing that you really wish your customers did better? Almost all of them are going to say mowing. I wish they would mow right. Follow the one third rule. Stay on top of the mowing. You know, don't let don't let clumps build up if if your if your uh, mulching mower is weak or whatever it is. Right? Don't mow when it's wet. If if you could just get that piece out there, your results would be better just by default, right? And then the next thing would be watering, right? Oh, these guys, I can see the active ingredient today. They put down. They say it's a pre-emergent. I see it's prodiamine. Well, I know what that is because I. I've been online and, and been taught, I need to get that watered in. One half inch of water, by the way, I've taken the tuna can challenge and I know how long it takes to get a half inch of water down. You see, I can just ramble off my content and how it should be in a perfect world also working right along with what you guys do. You're spot on in terms of that. In terms of our client base as a professional company, it's awesome. It is such a good feeling when we have a homeowner come out and look at the yard with us and they're able to show us the map that they drew of their irrigation system and its output and we know where they got that idea from and it's a great resource because not only are they understanding it but they have an appreciation for the amount of work and knowledge that it takes to get it where it needs to be um in your experience do you see there being kind of this pocket scenario because you talked about how so many professionals want their homeowners to know how to mow the right way on the kind of reverse table of that, do you see a situation where a lot of your DIYers really wish they had a professional in their pocket to help with something like fungus or something different? Yeah, so that's where the resources come in, right? Because this is where learning from me online is great, but I don't know what's going on in in Virginia now versus what's going on in, in California. I, I do my best to keep up on those things. I try to understand what that is, but I don't know down to the neighborhood like you guys do. For, so for sure, to have that resource there that I'm working with you already, I'm going to lean on you now 
because I do care, right? I, I'm going to call you before the brown spots go from this corner to the other end of the yard, which I know you guys have happened like with grubs, right? You go and there's a lawn that's decimated with grubs you're, and you haven't been there for four weeks. You're up for your normal end. And you're like, Mr. Customer, uh, bro, didn't, didn't you notice that happening or, or what? And the, and the truth is, no, they didn't. But if they were engaged and they were uh, educated, then yes, they would notice quickly. And probably what they'd do is get out on their knees and dig and actually find them. And then just call you and go, just, hey, I just need the corrective grub app, please. <laughs> How awesome would that be, right? That'd be, that would be awesome. That's, yeah. And that's really what we've tried to accomplish with the channel that we have. And what we've tried to accomplish when we talk to our clients and say, go check out Alan's channel or go check out somebody else's channel is the more resources somebody has. And just even if it's little tidbits that they pick up, that knowledge is 100% power because they're there every day, they see their lawn changing, and they can get in touch with us a lot more effectively if they know what to be watching for and everything. Um, right. If there was any advice that you could give a homeowner that's trying to do DIY, what would it be? So it would be don't, tr I, I say this often, is don't try to eat the entire elephant in one bite because it can get overwhelming, especially the way that I teach. And I realize that the way I teach is, is I uh, overcomplicate things. And it, I don't know why I do that. It's just in my nature to do that. I want to be so thorough that it tends to get complicated. And sometimes I get people worked up just, just from the way I am. I talk fast and all of those things. So I, but I don't want people to think I have to correct every problem in my lawn tomorrow with one magical app and one giant we control. It's, it's a series of things. I say it's like a relationship. It's like a marriage. When you look at people that have been married for like 60 years and they're still holding hands, I can tell you they, they started that way and that's where they are now. But all in between that was a lot of struggle and a lot of work, right, to do that. And that's a lawn. A lawn is a relationship. When, and, and this is where I get, you know, I'm, it's a lawn care nut, okay? But you know, when you bought your house, everything in the house was non-living. The roof shingles are not alive. The glass windows aren't alive, the countertops are not alive, but your lawn is alive and your lawn is going to continue to grow. And by the way, that same lawn will live with you for 60 years. And so you have to look at it that way. It's a marathon. It's a long ball game. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then the, the challenge that comes in too is, is online. What do you see on Instagram? Does anybody put up pictures of their lawn? My lawn sucks. I neglected it. I, I chopped it off at the knees on purpose. That's why it looks this way. I hate you, lawn. By the way, somebody should start that Instagram like the anti-lawn. And you just hate lawns. You know, you could be like human from Seinfeld. But but the idea is nobody does that. Everybody puts up the beautiful picture of the lawn, the perfect stripes with the perfect angle, with the sun just right. You know, I always do that too where the palm trees wave through the sunset. So everybody thinks, oh my God, it's so beautiful in Florida. Well, of course it is. Because that's the only time I put those kind of pictures up. And so that puts a little more stress on people and it also gives them a false sense of where they should be instead of realizing this is something that's going to take a little bit of time. Ooh, that was a ramble. <laughs> it was a good one though. And you're, you're absolutely right about it. It's when people find it as a point of pride, it makes a big difference. Um, I've yeah. had, I've got a couple questions in the chat right now, as well as questions from our video that we posted this morning, kind of teasing this attempt at a smoothly run live show, um, <laughs> asking about soil testing and if that's something that, you know, is valuable for a company to be doing for all of their clients. Is it something that homeowners should go out and do for themselves if their company won't do it or if they're doing it DIY? In your opinion, is a soil test the make it or break it in terms of building a program? Wow, this is a good question. And this is one that, and I want your guys, I'll give you my opinion, but I want you guys to give me your opinion, please, okay? In fact, give me your opinion first, because I, I want to know, because I got, I don't think I'm going to say what you what you think, but go ahead, You what's your opinion? We soil test everybody. We okay. soil test every long before we get started. It's usually the first thing we do when we go out. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's a huge part of our program and a big part of that is out of necessity, I think, because we have extremely dirt soil. Like it's, it's absolute garbage because we're on a granite bedrock that is hugely gravel based in terms of the sediment that's that subsoil and a ton of our properties that we maintain are new builds and we actually have a video coming up in the next week or so um, that's all about new construction and how that's such a big problem oh, that's because good. all that topsoil is going away that subsoil is absolute junk super low organic matter most of the time and extremely acidic ph 
um, very, very sandy. So we have to take that soil test to really hone in on that pH deficit because 99% of our clients need huge amounts of lime to really rectify that. So it's been one of those things where that soil test not only has been an asset for us to be able to really develop our program, both as kind of a blanket as well as those customized treatments, but on top of that, it's really made a difference in terms of being able to show a homeowner, right. this is your dirt. This is how bad it is. You have a two parts per million phosphorus level, which is nothing. Like there's, there's nothing that we're working with naturally. So it's going to be a process. And all of a sudden, if you're showing them results with their name on it, their address, and it's empirical data that hits home for a lot more people than just yeah. saying, oh, well, look at how sandy it is, you know? So what, what's your thought on it now that we've shared ours? Yes. So the fact that you do that, I, I think that you are obviously a class above everyone, 100% of people that I've heard. So yeah, that's awesome. That is a unique selling proposition. I know you guys hammered that home. And plus any data that you have, data is power. And it also creates trust, right? Someone cannot argue with data. They can try, but they but they can't, right? And if you have the data and your competitors don't, you should win every time. So I love that. Now I'll tell you that being an old Kimlon guy, we never <laughs> tested the soil ever. I mean, I, I think we may have had some guy's number like at the universe at like Purdue if like we had to because of what you know, we would call him and be like, bro, can you can you uh, bring your soil probe up here? You know? So we didn't do that because we just knew if we throw down enough, you know, in, you're good. Now Again, and I, I always disparage True Green because it's fun and because I like to needle at them. But I fall somewhere in the middle of that now. You have to realize, though, my audience is a little bit different. And so typically what I want from a DIYer when they first kind of come into our community or come into our content or whatever, I'm like, I want you to go throw down. Just get out there because I think that's the biggest barrier to entry is people who just – they have this fear, I'm gonna burn it, I'm gonna do something wrong, I'm gonna hurt, and I'm like, no, 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 I'll give you a couple firks that aren't gonna hurt anything, get out there and just do it. You gotta just do it one time, and then you're like, ah, oh, okay, this is what it is. After that, typically they're gonna see some results too, and that result that they see kind of kicks them to that next level, they're like, okay, now I wanna start hacking this, right? So you can see how I think, and, and if you read any of my content or my guides, I, I mean, I give out all of my best material for free on purpose, and that's what I teach. Just let me let me give you that confidence to do something. And by the way, I think that's also a breaking point for a lot of people that get out and they do that, and they're like, wow, that was harder than I ever thought. I don't want to do any more. I'm going to go now back and hire my professional again or go to a professional, and by the way, I'll come to that professional with more respect this time. Or they go, or or like most in our community, they catch the bug, and then they're like, oh, yeah, man, I'm in like Flynn. Well, now it's time to get that soil test, and now you can start hacking, baby. And that's where it gets fun, right? Trying to figure out, oh, I'm going to use this this time, that this time. And then that goes back to that same thing we just mentioned. When you get that soil test, I don't need you to put down all of the rainbow in one app. No, no, no. It, it's directional data. It's like a blood test when the doc sees you and he goes, all right, I'm going to give you a couple things you should take here. See you again in six months to follow up. That's how I look at DIY soil testing. Type deal. So that's, I love that you went with the medical analogy because we use that so much across the board in terms of you know, the soil test is your blood work and now we can recommend vitamin supplements that you need to take and everything else. When I was kind of thinking about what we were going to do with this video and talking about DIY versus professional service, one of the comparisons that I thought about is when the doctor tells you to change your diet. And this kind of ties into the Movember thing too is you can have a doctor that you go to yearly, hopefully, and they're going to tell you, you know, this is what I recommend based on the tests that we're doing and stuff like that. And then when you go home, it's not your doctor feeding you during the day and the doctor isn't giving you a shot every day. You're DIYing your health care as soon as you go home. Um, in terms of that, is there something that you've seen, and I guess this is kind of a flip side to the question that I asked earlier, where professional companies are kind of cutting off their nose in terms of being able to work with homeowners who want to be involved in some way. Do you think that there's too much of a push for upselling rather than educating and giving them access to tools to be able to apply their own fungicide or something like that? 
Yeah, I think part of it comes down to, let's just face it, it when you own a business, you know, uh, payroll is one of your largest, it, probably besides chemical costs, payroll is your largest line item, right? Your largest expense. So talking and educating to customers, educating customers is going to increase your payroll. And as a business, sometimes you need to get work done so you can keep your revenue flowing. So it becomes this challenge. And I'm talking like the lawn specialist educating his or her customers. That's what I mean. Like that lawn specialist needs to be spraying, you know, so many thousand square feet per hour in order to pay for themselves. So, you know, so, so there's this challenge between that. Whereas me, I, I don't have that. I can talk all day. I can sit here all day and educate my community. That's so that it goes back to that same advantage, disadvantage thing. So I don't know where I was going with that. Because Brandon Ronning kind of cracked me up, but uh, happens all the time to me, bro. So he's cool. <laughs> no, but, you, uh, you, you were on track in terms of that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's kind of the way that, that we see it, too, is there's, there's a lot of potential there. But from a business perspective, it's hard. And I think because lawn care is one of those things where because there's the DIY option, you know, it's not like surgery you can't perform surgery on yourself it's literally illegal you know because there's the ability to do it yourself there's a little bit less respect right from the get-go for a lot of people for how much business is behind it and you know you can't just go out and talk to somebody for an hour because all of a sudden you're behind on your schedule and that throws everything off um in Let me turn, I, will, I wanted to bring one thing this reminded yeah. me so because we didn't get to go back into this from the beginning but you asked me some of the reasons why I started doing what I'm doing. One of the reasons was because the way that my customers talked to me when I was at True Green, even though I knew in a lot of cases I was telling them the right things. Like when somebody over, people in Chicago, Chicago water is free in the city of Chicago. I don't know if it is anymore, but it was back in the late 90s and 2000s. It was free. So people would leave their sprinkler on all day, every day. Literally, I'm talking all day. And so they would drown their lawns out. Well, they wouldn't believe me. Even though I'm walking, it's you know, they wouldn't believe me. So I thought when the internet got big, I thought if I could create content online, and, I, and if you look back at my old blog, I used to go by the name Alan Paul instead of Alan Hain because I was trying to be a little bit covert because my one of my original thoughts was when somebody would call me up and not believe me as True Green, I would say, you know what? Go to this blog dude over here <laughs> nice. and see if, if he's telling see what I was doing? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that is exactly what I do now is I answer. If you look at the questions, the majority of the questions I answer in YouTube, they're the same things I dealt with for my customers. So what I'm getting at here is, is I'm hoping that the messages I spread are in that same vein as the message you spread. So that way, hopefully, if customers do try to fact check you on something, when they find me, they'll go, ah, those guys were right. Now, I can't, I'm can't. i not 100% right at everything because I realize there's a lot of opinion that goes into a lot of different things. So I'm not trying to say that. But I think some facts are some facts about mowing and watering and, and things like these. I'm hoping that those things can help assist you. Just as oftentimes I'll have people come up to me and say, Alan, I actually use your videos to train my new lawn specialists. And I, that's great. I'm, that should go along with that. And then hopefully then that means that we are talking the same thing here and that we are, you know, working to the same message and that hopefully my content, again, would help you guys um, in what you're doing with customers. And by the way, use it. I think I've said that to Jimmy before. Send my videos to your people. You know, it's, don't call me. I'll tell them what's up. It's it's completely true. It's, it's a huge asset because – you know, we're making these videos and I know that we have colleagues that use our videos to educate their clients and <laughs> vice versa. So it's kind of one big loop in terms of that, which some people might think is a Ponzi scheme, but I don't. But what's really cool is being able to, because a lot of what we do is sales based, um, Brandon and I, to be able to go out to somebody's property to meet with them for the first time. And they've clearly been doing it themselves. It's green and it's thick and it's stupid. And we say, you know, where, where'd you, what, obviously you're not just doing Scott's, what are you doing? And they say, oh, well, I'm a lawn care nut. <laughs> and to be able to say, oh, the channel, immediately, if you know what they're talking about, it's a huge door opener. So it's an asset in the 21st century to be up to date in terms of not just what's happening in the industry, 
but what your clients are seeing and what they're using to educate themselves because there is more information to self-educate out there than there has been in human history. It's an amazing revolution in terms of the amount of educational material that's accessible across the board, whether you want to play an instrument, do your lawn, learn how to speak another language, whatever you want to learn, it's out there. So for companies to be able to keep up with that, no matter the industry, but especially ones that are providing a service that could potentially be done itself by a homeowner, it's so valuable to know what they're knowing and to keep up to date yep. on what information is being put out there. And that can be dangerous too, because there's a lot of material out there that may or may not be coming from the right place. It can be manipulative and it's trying to sell a product the wrong way, or it can be completely misguided or have ulterior motives. Is there a channel out there right now in the lawn care community that you're seeing grow and that you're excited about? Who are you really watching at this point? Oh man, there's so many. You you put me on the spot when I have to name just one. Oh, you um, can name as many as you want. But no, I mean, there's. I, I like the lawn tools. I think they they come and they bring you know J um, Jordan and the, and his brother who I can't remember his name right tool left tool, <laughs> but but they bring some really creative stuff. I mean, they're building like literally a golf course in their backyard, so that's like something super different. And then, uh, honestly, you know, I mean, Connor Ward is, has been my friend for a long time. Another guy that's doing a lot of really cool, different things. He kind of created, as far as I'm concerned, he created the real mowing revolution on YouTube. And uh, people always ask me if I'm going to join that. And the answer is, nope, no plans right now. Uh, it's not my thing. But, but um, you know, a lot of great creators out there that, that have come along in the last few years. And that's good to see. I wanted to go back to um, talking about you guys creating content real quick. Because that's that's where I wanted to focus for this, and one of the, going back to where when I worked for True Green is one of the things I tried to get across when I worked there was, hey, we have an opportunity as the world's largest lawn care company. We have the resources that the internet is getting big now. We should go online, and at that time it was blogs. YouTube wasn't a thing until you know a little bit later. But I was like, we should be owning these. We should be the authority. There should be no one else ranking for anything but us when it comes to lawn care tips. That way, it solves the problem. And when True Green didn't do that, that's when I started my blog. And my blog started ranking 15,000 visits a month. You know, just that's where I learned SEO and that's how I went to digital marketing. But getting back to that, that's where I've always said is why aren't the pros, if there are professionals out there that complain about what I do or think I'm giving away the secrets, because that can, I've had that happen. I've had a few say things like that. It's like, well, why didn't you do it? I, I, I asked True Green to do it years ago. They could be so far ahead of everyone right now if they would have just listened, but they didn't. So I love that you guys are out there and taking that time because I realize you have to run a business too. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy for lawn professionals to make content on YouTube. It's not because you run a real business, right? So I get it, but I still think it's that important that you do put that time into it and the effort like you guys do, and you can see that it pays off in a lot of different ways. It definitely pays off, and if there are any other professionals that are watching this stream right now or later, one of the big things that I can say from experience at this point is how valuable it is, if nothing else, to at least create a foundation of basic information. Because the videos that we've done, we've only been doing the YouTube channel for about a year, and the videos that we've done at this point are this great little bank of base knowledge in terms of how to identify brown patch, what aeration seeding is, why your soil looks the way that it does, these little things that 10, 20, 50 years from now, people are still going to be asking. It's still going to be relevant information and still going to be needed in terms of that knowledge. So whether it's something that you're just kind of building slowly or you start with that written content, whatever it is, it is so worth investing in the education of your clients because it pays off tenfold down the road. And can't you send it to them? Like I would, I, this is what Matt Martin, one thing he said at, uh, I think it was Longcology and a couple other places I've heard him say it, is you know you build that content bank and now customers that might email in questions or even call in, you can go, hey, I got a video that we did on that. You give them the answer quick, whatever, but then you send them the video because that's a lot of what I do, right? When I get people writing into me, I try to give them a good answer real quick and they go, by the way, here's like a ton more detail. Here's a video. And so it should already help with your customer service as well. 
That's exactly right. It absolutely does. And if anything, that makes office support time a little bit more efficient. Um, we've gotten to the point where we have a video for each of the applications that we do. So we send that out with a day out notice and that video is right there. So the number of calls that we get from our clients saying, well, what is this? Do I have to clean up the leaves? What, what are we doing? Has dropped even though our client base has greatly increased because they've already got it right there and they can watch a three minute video and they know what they need to know. Um, I see that Kenny Cooper just asked about how many of our customers watch our videos and it's actually about half, I would say. Um, about 50% of our clients are engaged with our videos. Most of the time when I go out or talk to anybody, they're like, I was watching your video about this. They're not watching every single one and they're not necessarily subscribed. But what we do is we condense a lot of our videos from the last month into our monthly newsletter. So it's kind of a highlight reel, basically. So there's a little short article that links out to a blog that expands on a key point for that time of the year. And then there's a video version that's linked to our YouTube video that we had set out a couple weeks ago. So it's all right there. We're trying to bring that different multimedia based on people's learning preferences. Because I'm a reader. He's not. <laughs> so not. <laughs> there's a couple of different preferences in terms of that. Um, if there's one thing that you see people really clicking into in terms of the kind of information that they really respond to and want to learn about. Alan, do you think that there's a starting point for a professional that's wanting to get into YouTube of what kind of content they should produce first? Yeah, I actually think if, if I was going to go start a professional lawn service today and I wanted to be able to do social media and reach out to my customers is I would go Instagram stories right from the start. Because I can do that on the fly, uh, and it's I have to don't have to edit, but I can tell good stories, and it actually, you know, it's it's filming your day, so it's showing that you're hustling out there. It's, you can show things in the lawn that you're doing. You can identify weeds. You can just be a resource, and it's something that people are on. I think I love YouTube, I mean, honestly, but Instagram Stories it just allows that. It, it's also what I call look live. This is a term. We used to use in advertising. I did automotive uh, advertising for many years, and we used to call certain radio spots were look live. In other words, it felt like it was going on right now. So, for example, if I was a car dealer advertising a sale, I would have in the background the sound like I'm at the showroom, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm looking across the showroom right now. There's people are going crazy over here. I can't believe the deals that are happening right here in front of me right now. you got to get here. That's look live, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> late. Y'all keep me up late. Strange <laughs> thing. You know that. That's why I go to breakfast all the time. But the long and the short of that is, is you can do that with Instagram stories. So what it is, is you can look live like, I got a lot going on. I'm successful. I'm here for you. This And people will be like, man, I want to be a part of that. So that's why I like Instagram stories. And again, no barrier to entry. We talk about barriers to entry. I talk about that with everything. You talk about that earlier with the, the internet and people doing DIY, I mean, people DIY stuff now, they would have never attempted back years ago. You, the only way you knew how to do certain things like electrical or whatever is if somebody in your family taught you or you went to school for it. Now everybody can be an electrician, not me, <laughs> but a lot of people can't. So the long and the short of that is barriers to entry, Instagram stories, and you can push them over to Facebook too. So you get, you get double doozy right there. Mm -hmm. And so you can hopefully build uh, audience on both. That's that's a really great point. We have we have an Instagram page and we post pictures on it, but we don't really dive into the entire Instagram story thing because that's it's just growing exponentially in terms of what those apps really dive into and all the different things that they can do. So that's a great idea just as a little way to get your feet wet. And you can do that from your phone. You don't have to invest in the camera and the microphone and all that other kind of stuff. So that's cost effective as well for that little bit of gain in terms of client information and everything else. Yep. Um, since at this point we're all getting a little sleepy, it's starting to push 10 o'clock, is there any takeaway message, Alan, that you want in terms of how DIY and professional lawn care coexist or anything else that you see going on with the industry right now? Yeah, I'll say um, I'll take this minute to give this pitch that I always do and I'll give you a, a quick uh, story. So this week, actually, I was on the phone with a very large chemical company, very large, and there's only like five. And uh, and it wasn't anybody up high in the chain, in the food chain, but I was on a, on the, a call with them, and I, they wanted to try to do some advertising with an influencer and this kind of stuff. And, and I always take those meetings, even though I realize those companies are so big, nothing will come out of it. But 
interestingly enough, as soon as they heard that my channel was mainly geared to DIYers, they off the phone as quick as they could go. And uh, so I just want to say that the the DIY community is still very small in the uh, overall way that the green industry thinks. But anyone that doesn't take the DIY community seriously is making a giant mistake. So that's what I will say there. And I personally believe that what we do as a DIY community, and again, I consider you guys a part of that. You're not DIY community, but you're DIY friendly. <laughs> like you said, saying it's like you could call it maybe co-opetition, even though I don't see it that way, and I hope y'all <laughs> don't. That's a really good phrase. Yeah, I understand why some people do see it that way. But the long and the short of it is I believe that what we do online here in, is influencing the future of the entire green industry. And I really, really believe that. Somebody could say that I'm arrogant and over-talking, but I really believe it. And it isn't just me. It's not Alan Hain. It's collectively all of us together. There's a ton of people making content here. And uh, and I just think that, that to not pay attention to that is, is a mistake. So... There you go. <laughs> I think that's a that's a good pitch. That you're absolutely right because at the end of the day, like we talked about, there's more and more information going out there from more and more resources for more and more types of people. People want to get their hands dirty. They want to be involved in it. That's natural human instinct is to be curious. So it's it's foolish to ignore that because it's only going to get stronger. Um, I really appreciate your time, Alan, and I appreciate. Everybody at home that's watching, especially the ones who were with us from about 9 to 9.15 when the struggle was real. Um, and be sure if you haven't done so already and you're like one of the last living people on earth that hasn't subscribed to the Lawn Care Net YouTube channel, go ahead and do that because Alan just continues to pop out innovative and really entertaining content that whether you're a DIYer who's there to learn or you're a professional who's there to learn what your clients are learning, it's a great idea to stay on top of that no matter what. And if you aren't subscribed to our channel and you want to see me be really awkward and mess up a microphone, <laughs> again, be sure to subscribe to our channel as well so that you can stay up to date on our videos. We've got a few more coming out before the season wraps up this year. Um, Alan, I, again, greatly appreciate your time and I really look forward to seeing what else you have in store for everybody. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being you thank you for networking with me and and networking with networking all of the community of the and being community a big part of that and part of that i look forward to seeing how many more things and how many more things awesome i really appreciate it and i hope that everybody at home has a picture perfect evening we'll see you guys later